All right. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is Michelle Tiberge and Emily Van Engel. And Emily is a good friend of mine and a student, and she's um, known her for a while. And she's an artist. She lives near me. And she came and she's helping me design a card for my show. And she's like, I have some important medium questions. And I said, Is it okay if we videotape <laughs> <laughs> answering these questions? Because I figured there might be other people out there in YouTube land who would benefit from the answer. So, Emily, what are your questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to know if you can pour pouring medium directly onto raw canvas. Okay. Like if I've done a steam painting with mm -hmm. acrylic inks. On oh, okay. Canvas, okay. And then stretch the canvas over stretcher bars. Can yeah. I just pour. Yes, actually, okay, so that you added to it because when you first told me the question, I wasn't picturing the stain painting on there, and I also wasn't picturing that it was stretched. Okay. So if you were to pour directly on the canvas and it hadn't been stretched, sometimes, depending on the weight of the canvas, the weight of the medium and the solidity of it and then the fluidity of it, I, it tends to kind of like buckle up or pucker up the canvas. Mm -hmm that's like not part of the disc of pouring medium or the area of pouring medium. But since you'll have it stretched, you won't have that. And then the other thing I was gonna tell you about, there's something called SID or support induced discoloration. Mm -hmm. So that happens when an acrylic medium picks up color from, it kind of bleeds from the substrate. So like um, in canvas, that can sometimes create like a yellowing into mm -hmm. the medium. And so if there's no primer on it, um, it also happens, I think I've heard of it happening with masonite. People hear, you most often hear of it happening with gessos because they're mm -hmm. white and so someone might gesso over a surface and suddenly get some kind of weird kind of brownish bleeding or yellowish bleeding through and mm -hmm. be like, what's this? And that's usually support induced discoloration. So it basically, because acrylics have this amazing ability, which is why you can do image transfers with them, which is they take anything and like any kind of coloring and suck it into its own body you know into mm -hmm. the body of the acrylic and so anyway so that was the only thing i would think of but um because you're going to have dried acrylic already on there that's stain painting i think if there was any sort of port induced discoloration it wouldn't be even visible because you have your own color on there okay. but if you were to do it on a blank spot you might end up kind of yellowing the medium a little bit mm -hmm. if that makes sense so okay. Um, but yeah, I like that you're stretching it. If you were really concerned about it, you could do a coat of like matte medium on top okay. or um, even gloss medium, which will create a little bit of sheen, which I don't mm -hmm. think knowing your work is something you're going for. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, you know, when I've seen your stain paintings, they have kind of like a matte mm -hmm. feel to them. So you may not want the, a f one coat of gloss medium on raw canvas won't make a high gloss surface you know because mm -hmm. a lot of it will sink into the canvas but so you could try matte medium gloss medium or clear gesso okay on top of your thing but I would maybe do tests because you know sometimes as artists are really finicky about our surface mm -hmm. and you know maybe a little bit of a sheen takes away from the look that you were going for yeah. so you just practice with it before you do it on like a piece that you're all excited about feeling like it's really going somewhere maybe do some little tests Okay. You know, just to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, you had another question? I oh. did, yeah. I wanted to know if you could just layer on top of the pouring medium. Like, if you do a pour, and then can you paint on it with, like, the hard body or soft body or acrylic inks, and then do another yes. layer? Yeah, so, so you've got a layer of pouring medium, and then can you paint on top with acrylic? Mm -hmm. And then can you put more pouring medium on, or more right. paint, or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, so because basically what you're doing when you're building up all these layers of acrylic, mm -hmm. as long as there's not too much water, you're creating um, a molecular honeycomb structure. Mm -hmm. So all acrylic will bond really well with acrylic unless we add too much water, which is a whole subject of another whole video that I made called Worst Mistake Acrylic Painters <laughs> Make. I didn't do a great enough explanation on that of, well, maybe I did. I did talk about the molecules, but basically you know the the round spherical acrylic molecules bond with the other ones and interlock and when they dry they form what looks like a honeycomb so it's like a 3d structure of these hexagons and mm -hmm. so whether it's pouring medium or gloss medium or gel medium or acrylic ink or soft body paint or heavy body paint any of those 
have those acrylic molecules and they'll bond to each other. So even though it looks like, I mean, you can see this, this is pouring medium on top of paint. Mm. Even though it looks super slick, I'm, I'm guessing you asked this because it's like, looks like nothing would stick, right? It's right, so slick. Yeah. But this is actually paint on top of many, many layers of pouring medium. Okay. Um, so I probably did like seven or nine layers of pouring medium and then I did these marks on top and then I poured more on top. So that's exactly what you were asking. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Totally, totally okay. Totally okay. Doable. Yeah. Cool. And you had another question? Cool. <laughs> but that was it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so Thank much. You.